गुणातीत अक्षर ब्रह्म भगवान पुरुषोत्तम जनो जान निदम सत्यम मुच्यते भव बंधना श्री स्वामीनारायण भगवान की जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज की जय राधा कृष्ण देव की जय सियावर रामचंद्र भगवान की जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज की जय महंत स्वामी महाराज की जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज शताब्दी महोत्सव की जय विथ प्रोस्ट्रेशन एट द डिवाइन फीट ऑफ भगवान स्वामी नारायण एंड माय गुरु हरि परम पूज्य प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज एंड परम पूज्य महंत स्वामी महाराज माय हार्टीएस्ट नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग एंड जय स्वामी नारायण टू ऑल टाइम मेंबर्स गेस्ट्स वेल द टॉपिक गिवन टू मी टुडे इज अ बिजनेस हार्ट नॉट जस्ट अ बिजनेस माइंड and perhaps you will be more surprised that how would a sanyasi a sadhu talk on this particular topic when he has never done any business in his life <clears throat> when he has not done any professional job in his life and when he has not done any money churning activity in his life but the fact is that certain principles apply in all the fields you would be surprised to know that some of the coaches of it professionals in silicon valley in california are actually football coaches they say that the principles of football they ideally apply in it principles and norms of football they ideally apply in the it industry as well the executives of google the executives of microsoft the executives of many giant it companies are being trained by football coaches because the basic principles of training a person when it comes to disciplines and norms when it comes to ethical values in life when it comes to time management when it comes to a combination of head and heart applies to all the activities whichever field you undertake so those are common principles so when you talk of a business heart and not just a business mind it reminds me of a book which i read many years back and many of you might have read and it is one of the most decorated management book ever written upon this planet i'm talking of seven habits of highly effective people written by none other than one of the most celebrated management gurus upon this earth stephen covey in which he met interviewed learned about the life of more than 3000 successful businessmen upon this earth successful as a businessman as a husband as a wife as a father as a mother as a brother as a sister successful in all walks of life he understood their thought processes he understood their basic behavioral patterns he understood their basic working styles and then in concludes he writes this book in which he writes that this are the seven habits that i have found common in this people who were successful in all walks of life the first habit was proactive matlab pratikul paristhiti mein sanukul pratibhav in all circumstances in opposing situations you still respond positively that was their mark that was their winner pratikul paristhiti mein sanukul pratibhav they teach not to react but to respond after taking the whole picture into consideration 
in the utmost negatives thrown at you by people, by circumstances, by work. Try to pour out your heart to respond most positively. Because you stand a caliber. You want to create a situation that could become a source of inspiration for all the people who know it. When you have negatives in front of you, your business mind will tell you. Tit for tat. And as we learn, butter for fat. But your business mind will teach you tit for tat. But your business heart, Stephen Covey tells, teaches you that don't give a negative response to a negative action. Remain to the best positive that you can. If not to better the situation, at least for your internal stability and peace. Situation may or may not better by your positive response. But definitely, it will land you in a state of positive stability and peace. Proactivity. Respond to every situation to the best of human caliber that you know, you possess and you want to exhibit. That is proactivity. That is a business heart, not just a business mind. Second, he writes, begin with the end in mind. Second habit these people possess was, begin with the end in mind. Whatever you start, a business or a relationship, you need to have some picture of the end result that you expect, you want and you want to design. Before you start, you must know where the end is. You start a journey from home. You want to go to Uti. Present times you can't. Today at least no. Because it is all waterlogged. I got the pictures from one of our volunteers. And I saw it. So before you start the journey, you know the end point. You also need to have your travel plans. That is a business mind. Begin with the end in mind. And when you have the end in mind, smallest of hindrances to the largest of obstacles, you will be able to overcome because you have the final goal in your mind. That you want to reach there. Any obstacle, you will yourself find the route. Which is called the bypass route. Stephen Covey writes that you will be able to overcome all your obstacles and hurdles provided you have the end in mind. Third habit putting first things first. Priority. Normal habit of a business mind is you start the day and the task with the easiest things that you can do. And with the tougher ones, difficult to do, I'll do it later. You start with the easiest and the small things that you can do, you feel happy about, you feel satisfied about, that you got out of the nine things to do today, you got taken five before lunchtime. Give priority, that is a business mind. Putting first things first. Fourth habit, think win-win. Now this is a business heart. Think win-win. I also win, you also win. I also progress, you also progress. I also make a profit, you also make a profit. I also be happy, you also be happy. I also become prosperous, you also become prosperous. That is how you do business with people. Now the times are such that nobody will be able to have his authority designed upon somebody for longer time. You can cheat a person once, not twice. And you can never cheat a mass. Now those days are gone. So think win-win. You also win, I also win. 
in the business that we do between us. I also gain and you also gain. Now the days are gone that you can, out of ignorance of somebody, you can gain all the profit of that deal. You also gain, I also gain. Because in times of this open atmosphere, in times of internet, in times of so much of information sharing and caring, in terms of in times of this information highway that we have, everybody is aware of everything happening around. Everybody is aware of quality of products. So think win-win is again a business heart and not just a business mind. Fifth habit this successful people had was seek first to understand and then to be understood. This is again a business heart and not a business mind. Seek first to understand. During a conversation with somebody or when you are sitting across the table for a business deal with somebody, you need first to understand what he actually says. You need to understand what actually he means. For that, Stephen Covey has termed a very beautiful term, emphatic listening. Listen with empathy. So listen not just to answer, listen to understand the person. Normally this empathic listening doesn't happen. That is listening to understand. We always listen to answer. Even while we are listening somebody, we are preparing the answer in our mind. And that is, this is the biggest cause of the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law problem in the world. The biggest cause of mother-in-law, daughter-in-law problem upon this earth is because of this. They don't listen to understand. They listen to answer. It's the root cause of all issues. So it is again a business heart that you listen to understand the person. Everybody has an opinion and he stands by that opinion in his house or at office that actually if everybody does what I say, everybody can prosper. But then everybody has this opinion. In the home, everybody has an opinion that if all the members in the family, they do as I say, they will all be happy. But then everybody holds this opinion in the house. How will you run the show? So business heart means you learn, you listen to understand the person, understand his opinion, understand his views, understand his perspective and thereby you answer. That is called empathic listening. That is a business heart and not just a business mind. Sixth habit is the most important of all habits as Stephen Covey puts. Sixth habit is synergy. We know what is energy. Stephen Covey has put the word, the letter S as a prefix to energy and that is called synergy. Finally described by him that this successful people had a habit of synergy. And what is that synergy? When two or more than two people, they come together, decide to work or stay together, decide upon a project, start discussions on it, they have their difference of opinions, yet they remain, that they remain committed to work together. After the discussion, they come to a CMP common minimum program, the way to execute it, they decide to work together, they work together, produce a result. That result is acceptable to both. They are happy about it. And in that happiness, an energy is created again to come together to do the next project. That is called synergy. This is called Hindi Bhasha Me Bolte Hai Suradai Bhav. That is a business heart. You don't be with your employees or your colleagues, absolutely with the business mind. Synergy. Let us come together. Let us work together. Let us produce results together. Let us enjoy the results together. 
This is what is taught by top class executives across the world. This is what is taught to top class executives across the world. Individually, you can win matches by your individual talents. Only collectively, you can win tournaments. Got my point? Individually, you can be a giant talent. Like Rohit Sharma, he scored five centuries in the World Cup edition this time. Extraordinary performance. His centuries won matches for us. But when we collectively failed, we were thrown out of the tournament. Against a team which in a normal condition, the New Zealand team, were like not a strong opposition against us. But we did not have the plan B. What if the top three fails? Shikhar Dhawan, Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli, if the top three go cheaply, we didn't have plan B. That was the analysis of these people. So synergy is this, when you collectively put an effort to gather understanding each other. So as an individual, you can win battles, but collectively you win wars. Same way individually you can win matches, but if you want to, want to win tournaments, you need synergy. Everybody has to perform to the optimum level, in congruence with each other. The organization that I come from, the BAPS Swaminarayan Sanstha, which is a worldwide organization among the top 10 NGOs of the world with a permanent seat in the United Nations. Our Guru Pramukh Swami Maharaj, perhaps you might have heard his name. You might have visited Akshardham at Delhi or Gandhinagar. He was the ideal example of synergy. Because we are 1100 saints in the organization, we have a whole range of talent and intelligence. Some saints had very ordinary primary education coming from Adivasi and backward class belts. And some of our saints are Harvard and Stanford graduates. So the range of saints who take care of our 162 activities of the organization in all fields. Social, cultural, medical, education, because we run more than 100 hospitals, hostels, schools and colleges. And I am talking to you this on this particular topic is not that just read a couple of books or present in myself. We are fully involved in the administration, in the management, in the HR of all our institutes. We know what is this. What I am doing now in front of you is my side job. Of course, not paid for it. <laughs> I don't charge a single penny for my talks. This is my hobby, talking to people, sharing good ideas with people, structuring their mindset for being better for, the, for tomorrow and inspiring them for better behavioral patterns that could improve and make their ha lives happy. This is my selfless service to society. Today morning, I was at Kikan Institute. Today, I'm talking here tomorrow. Evening also, I'm going to talk at Rotary at Chamber Hall. Chamber Hall. Chamber Hall. Tomorrow evening also. Then day after tomorrow, we'll be back. Talking in the evening in Mumbai. So keep on traveling, keep on talking. But then, to care and share for the society. I was talking of this synergy. When we are 1100 saints in the organization, we have a full range of the saints. Still, Pramukh Swami Maharaj could extract the best and the optimum from each and every saint. That is a unique thing of it. He has put all of us into synergy. And as I was introduced, we have like about 50,000 volunteers in the Swaminan Sanstha, the BAPS Swaminan Sanstha. Wherever there is floods or famine, we do our relief activities. Even in your state, in the state of Tamil Nadu, when we had tsunami like about in the year 2005 or 6, Chennai, the year was 2005, 4 or 5? December 26, 2004. Okay. So at, after that we adopted, initially we did relief activities, thereafter we adopted two villages and we constructed about 250 homes and gifted to the villagers, to the owners of the plots or the homes of that villages. 
So we did here as well. I'm talking of this thing like about 15 years back. So we have our volunteers also. There also we have a full range. But Pramukh Swami Maharaj was instrumental. He was the source of inspiration that he could keep all these saints and he could keep all these volunteers together. And extract the optimum from him according to his talent and work attitudes. And that is why this whole BAPS organization works. Even the top Lions International executives, top Rotary International people, when they talk about BAPS, they say that definitely we at Lions and Rotary do n number of projects for social services. But the type of volunteerism that BAPS has, we don't have it in Lions or Rotary. So that synergy is bringing all of them together and assigning the job according to his talents. This requires a big, big, big suppression of the leader's ego. If the leader has ego, it's difficult for him to assign tasks to some small people according to their talents, recognizing their energies. So synergy has to be worked out. It is a business heart. You would find sometimes that in many business organizations, there are people who are with the organization since 30 years, since 40 years. And the owners of that business have treated those people like family members. And that is how the organization grows. Sometimes we don't treat our family members as family members. Forget about the big synergy. Did you get my point? What I mean to say is, synergy has tremendous amount of energy that when, even when you are not like-minded people, you can still be, come together for a like-minded activity. Though the ways of doing that activity can differ. But discussions and debate give you the qualities of acceptance, compromise and adjustments and that is how synergy is produced. Debates and discussions. Sharing and caring for each other. That is how work goes on, relationship goes on, and that is how the world goes on. So that is synergy. Pramukh Swami Maharaj was once asked, Pramukh Swami Maharaj, as he said, created more than about 1300 places of worship all over the world. For that, the Guinness Book of World Records has written for him that he is the master builder of the 20th century. Six times is the Guinness Book of World Records. He has been the recipient of more than 20 plus key to the cities in America. He has been felicitated with standing ovations in the British Parliament, in the Canadian Parliament, in the Kenyan Parliament. We are celebrating his Shatabdi Mahotsav in 2021. It would be a 34 day huge festival in Ahmedabad. And this time, in this year on 4th of December, coming 4th December, we are celebrating it in a huge way at the D.Y. Patil Stadium in Navi Mumbai, New Mumbai. Pramukh Swami Maharaj was once asked, how is that you can get along with all kinds of people? Because we have seen him working with less educated people, more educated people, less experienced people, more experienced people. We have seen him working effectively with all abilities, creating best results in all the spheres of activity, social, cultural, moral, educational, medical, every field that we have. He could have his inputs into construction, he could have his inputs into finance, he could have his inputs into all kinds of these fields. Pramukh Swami said, beautiful answer, that when you are rightly connected with God, it is God who inspires you and your team members to work together effectively to produce a good result. Then after getting effectively connected with God, you should have a leaning towards getting effectively connected with people. Know the person, get connected with him. This is not just theory, it is practical. So synergy. And the last and the seventh habit was sharpen the saw. When you need a, to cut a log wood, if you have a saw, the first thing Stephen Covey says, you need to check the sharpness of that saw. If you have not checked 
the sharpness of that saw perhaps you have to labor a lot to cut that wood to cut that log so if the sharpness is not enough the first thing you have to do is to sharpen the saw in which he says physical mental emotional and spiritual four ways you need to sharpen your saw the saw is your body your body is your saw because by that you are going to do all kinds of activities as you need as you cut the wood by a saw in the same way your your body is your saw because by that you are going to do all kinds of activities physical mental emotional all kinds of activities yes or no so by physical he suggests exercises yoga mentally he suggests meditation and uh, good reading emotionally he suggests good wishes and emotions and well wishing for everybody and soul he says prayers and connecting with your creator the god through prayers every day this 3000 highly successful people surveyed interviewed by stephen covey they had this habit of connecting with their creator the god through prayers every day this was the habit that they possessed so don't say just it is god is just about people having a spiritual aspiration in life even if you want to have a good management or a good executive or a good business aspiration in life you need to have a spiritual aspect in life more pure within better activity without more pure within that you are better activity you will be able to do outside because the more people oriented you become you take care of your people your people will take care of your work simple so these are the seven habits i just list it out first proactive second begin with the end in mind third putting first things first fourth think win win fifth seek first to understand and then to be understood sixth synergy and seventh sharpen the saw this seven habits is a combination of a business mind and a business heart now certain common traits that we need to develop these are the highest ideals but practically practically common traits at your business place and your workplace which where you include your heart with your mind because the heart has reasons of its own which the head can never understand i give you a very simple example once jd rockefeller the first dollar billionaire upon this earth today the rockefeller foundation is very huge in new york jd rockefeller once came to know that because of a certain wrong decision a mistake of one of his employees the company has incurred a loss of 2 million dollars i'm talking of 60s rockefeller asked his secretary to call the employee to his chamber the employee knew that because of my mistake the company has incurred a loss of 2 million dollars which is a very huge 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 figure and that too in the 60s he knew that he would be fired by his boss he would be scolded and fired when he entered the chamber rockefeller asked him to take the chair which was a first surprise for him normally in this conditions the employee doesn't get a chair to sit in front of the ceo he is not offered a chair will you offer no because he is to be fired rockefeller asks him that what actually happened tell me the whole story and he with some hesitation with some fear within he narrated the whole story to rockefeller then rockefeller pulled out a small chit from the drawer small piece of paper and the employee got scared that he will stop my provident fund 
maybe he is influential so maybe he will probably freeze my accounts i don't know what he will do with me and rockefeller started narrating to him all the goods that he had done to the company in his last 20 25 years of services see gentlemen 15 years back in this particular project you really work hard and the company gained a lot because of that rockefeller started narrating all the goods that he had got done to the company so the employees started feeling good after narrating such five to seven stories rockefeller said that the amount of experience that you carry in your particular department in my company and the amount of time that my company and i and my seniors have spent on you and the amount of resources that i see in you to give back to the company if i give you one more chance is too much against just a small 2 million dollar loss that has the company has incurred because of your decision it doesn't stand in front of my eyes then he says very pleasantly go back to your work station enjoy your work nobody is going to fire you and carry on your work with all the ethical values that you have been doing so far the employee was in tears he broke down but at that moment he decided that i will work extra come up with some good ideas expand the company's interests anyhow within one year i will incur a profit of at least 2 million dollars more than normally i do he worked that and he reached a level of more than 3.5 million dollars in a single year this is a business heart before you take a hard decision at your workplace you have to take into consideration many human factors once he is used and you throw him he is not a use and throw material that you after you know that he is his talents his resources his know how are to this level but then his faithful association with you since years and decades has to be in the top priority consideration when you take a decision about that person that is a business heart once one of our very senior volunteer he left the organization because of some reasons that he felt emotionally not well a few years back when he met pramukh swami maharaj at another center pramukh swami maharaj caught hold of his hand and said i don't in my mind remember anything negative about you i have fully positive things about you filled in my heart in my mind at least before leaving the organization you should have told me once you should have met me once the mistake that you have made is very small minuscule and not even in my sight as compared to the years and decades of services that you have rendered to the organization so this is a business heart or working heart all the greats they have progressed because they have taken care of people they have given priority to people than work one of our senior gurus gunatyan swami he has said that if two people with the same understanding with the same liking and with the same emotions if they come together and decide to work together they can work like lakhs and crores that we can see practically in the society when two people of the same liking came to together understanding each other well the level of work that they can promote in the society gandhi and sardar bajpayee and advani and today modi and amit shah <laughs> if two people with the right kind of liking for each other understanding each other well right kind of grooming of each other and deciding to ever remain together stay together and work together they can produce miracles 
they produced three days back. Three days back they produced a miracle. It was not work, huh? it was a miracle. Because nobody in the population of 130 crores ever expected this to happen. What happened three days back? Are you getting what I'm talking? Yeah. What happened three days back? It is a miracle upon this earth. Nobody expected. But then they could create. Because they had the right connect, sync in with each other, likings, understandings and everything. So you understand the people well and you will create miracles. That is a business heart and not just a business mind. Some of the senior saints in our organization, BAPS, for example, Delhi Akshardham designer is one of our senior saints, Shiji Swarup Swami. The entire layout on 110 acres of land on the banks of Yamuna, that is Delhi Akshardham, was done by Shriji Swarup Swami. He is just to standard pass. He took Diksha when he was just 12 or 13 years old, way back in 1970. Would you ever assign a project of this class to a person of this academic caliber? Normally does modern management teach you or tell you this? But after initiation, his talents, his leanings, his learnings in this field, his know-how in this field, it started gradually grooming up. Pramukh Swami Maharaj inspired him, motivated him, supported him to groom his this talent and his this intelligence and ideas. And he did many small projects before that. Pramukh Swami Maharaj was confident that he could do this as well. And when he created the whole layout and the actual construction and everything started, a non-commercial, non-residential stone carving project on 110 acres completed by BAPS in five years. Entire layout done by him. When one of the very senior architects and on the who's who list of Asia, when he came to Akshardham and Shriji Swarup Swami in our saints asked him that, sir, any suggestion that you could give us because he was a very senior and among the top five in the whole continent. Dr. Mr. Doshi, a leading architect in Ahmedabad, he said, yes, I have a suggestion. And the saints and our team, Akshardham team were they felt elated, they felt happy that a class of Mr. Doshi is taking interest to this level and he has a suggestion after going around the whole campus and say, sir, well, sir you are welcome. And, doc, and Mr. Doshi said, my suggestion is, don't ask for suggestion to anybody. <laughs> my suggestion to you today standing at this place at the center of this Akshardham campus, when it was under construction, I'm talking of 2001 or 2. My suggestion is don't ask for any suggestion to anybody. Forget me. And he was surprised, sir, why? It is so beautifully done. He, Mr. Doshi has traveled to more than 100 countries. He knows such hundreds of projects. He said it is so beautifully done. I would suggest don't ask for any suggestion to anybody. See, this is a business heart of Pramukh Swami Maharaj. That means a working heart. Business heart means a working heart. That when you see some good qualities, some good talents, some good virtues, some good know-how in people, you support it to the extent that you fully groom that person. Not just one example. There are hundreds of such in our organization. And I tell you, it's difficult to run an NGO than a corporate. Small NGOs doing few activities during a calendar year is different. An NGO of the class that I come from, the BAPS Swaminand Sansta, you can see our website BAPS.org. 
इज अ वेरी ह्यूज इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो आपने अक्षरधाम देखा ना दिल्ली में या गांधीनगर में फोर सच कैंपस आर कमिंग अप वन इज जॉयनस वन इज इन जॉयनस बर्ग साउथ अफ्रीका अनदर इज इन सिडनी ऑस्ट्रेलिया द बिगेस्ट ऑफ इट इज ऑन टू हंड्रेड सिक्सटी फाइव एकर्स ऑफ लैंड इन रॉबिन्स विल न्यू जर्सी मोर देन फोर थाउजेंड आर्टिजन आर वर्किंग ऑन इट एट प्रेजेंट एट मोर देन ट्वेंटी सिक्स साइट्स इन राजस्थान वेन आई एम टॉकिंग टू यू एट दिस वेरी मोमेंट टूडे वी विल ओपन इट इन ऑगस्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू एंड द फोर्थ वन यू माइट हर्ट द न्यूज दैट Two two and a half months back, the capital of UAE, Abu Dhabi, the Sheikh of Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed Zayed, he donated twenty three acres of land to us, BAPS Swaminarayan Sangstha, on Dubai Abu Dhabi Express Highway. It is called the Sheikh Zayed Highway. and on that 23 acres of land we will build an akshardham like campus in the next 2 and a half to 3 years and see the synergy the land is donated by a muslim king to a hindu organization and the turnkey project that we have given to somebody is a singapore based company the owner of which is a communist chinese and the company has put a project manager for us full time taking care of this project is a catholic christian so it's going to be a combination of a muslim king a hindu organization a communist chinese company and a catholic christian project manager still we are working in harmony to get the project done it will be done so work is not just intelligence and talent how well you can relate with people be with the people take people along with you that creates your success so business heart has to work more than a business mind everybody has a business mind very few have business hearts of the class of ratan tata the way he works today is chairman emeritus once upon a time he was executive chairman for decades 80 companies under tata sons many of them fortune 500 companies imagine a person could handle so much coming out of tata motors board meeting he enters into tata infrastructure board meeting coming out of that in half an hour he enters into the new board room which is tata telecom feels change and he performed well for five decades recently he was at a convocation day of a b school wonderful speech on youtube you could perhaps listen especially the youngsters must nishit worth because he has poured out his heart his experience his emotions of being at the top at the helm of affairs at tata sons for more than 50 to 60 years a very rich corporate experience some of the words and some of the sentences that he has put forward are golden advices diamond advices to the younger generation into the corporate and business world experience counts yes or no experience counts about talent about intelligence about know how about academics one of the sentences that i liked which is a business heart that ratan tata possesses he said at the end of your professional career don't count your successes on the fatness of your bank accounts don't count your successes on the luxuries that you have earned and you possess don't count your successes on the number of relationships in the social spheres that you have created or you have enhanced don't count your successes on the luxury brands that you carry and wear then he gives a pause and then says but count your successes on the number of lives that you have enriched during your journey through the course 
number of lies that you have enriched, of the people around you who worked with you, who lived with you, who had been with you in your journey of life, how many lives that you enriched. That is your business heart. Along with the business mind, you need to do this. You would be surprised to know when I talk to you about Mr. Sauji Dolakya from Gujarat Surat. I don't know whether you have heard his name or not. But his story is worth reading, worth viewing on YouTube and worth narrating. Have you people heard his name? Sauji Dolakya. He is a huge diamond there. Maybe his company has 7,000, 8,000 crores of turnover every year. Hare Krishna Diamonds. Every year he gives his employees with some extraordinary gift. Car the house the house. Last year he gave 400 cars to his 400 employees. See, this was beyond salary, beyond perks, beyond bonuses, beyond commissions, whatever must be the business plan of the company. In one stroke, in one event, there were 400 cars parked, brand new cars and him, his family, his son, everybody, I know the whole family, I am so close to the family. Every year one or two events of their family we do together. This 15th of August evening I am talking in Surat to their cousin families. 400 cars to 400 employees. Just about one month back when we were at his place to, to his entire staff of 10,000 people, 10,000 plus at his farmhouse, we, I, he invited me for a talk. He gained working with him faithfully since more than 10 years. And then he announced that once you complete 10 years with me, faithfully giving everything that you have to the company, you will get a Mercedes from the company. He said, I want to enrich many lives. He says, the moment I close my eyes, that is when I die, I am not going to take anything with me. And we constantly feel that I am going to take everything with me. And that is why we hesitate in caring and sharing, whatever we have. That is a business heart. Preceding to that, a couple of years back, he gave 800 2 BHK flats to his 800 employees. He distributes his profits. He has a name that the Mercedes that I drive, my 50 top employees must drive the same Mercedes. And once 50 of my employees have this, we 50 families will go on a ride together. This is what Ratan Tata said. Count your success on the number of lives that you have enriched. This is a business heart. Not just think of profits and I-ness and minus 24-7. Because the amount of money that you have in your bank account when you die is the extra work you did you shouldn't have done. Got it? Or if at all you did and you accumulated, you should have distributed it well because you have only two choices when you are supposed to leave this earth. Two choices about your money. First choice is leave it and you have to leave it. And the second choice is give it. Less people opt for the second choice. Those who opt for the second choice, they have a business heart. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Azim Premji. He is the Indian star when it comes to charity and foundation. Vipro chairman Azim Premji. So far in the Azim Premji foundation, his endowment is 21.6 or 21.8 billion dollars. Whatever he earned, he gave in the donation, in foundation. That is a business heart. He has solely given his endowment for education purpose, but fine, whatever the cause that is close to your heart, you give your endowment for it. Education for less fortunate people is his, a cause that is close to his heart. As you people in Rotary have hope for burn, 
hope, hope, hope after fire. That is your a cause that is close to you. And you do some activity, energy, enthusiasm, money, whatever for that. But whatever cause that is close to your heart, you must do it. Spend your some resources on it. That is a business heart. Not just have a shovel and have everything back home after 6 p.m. At least make a decision or have a leaning that I will give more back to the society before I leave this earth than actually I have taken from the society. बाकी तो जब मृत्यु होगी ना तो बिफोर यू एंड मी आर बर्न वो जो गोल्ड लेयर वाली कैप जो टीच की होगी ना वो भी निकाल देंगे और कौन निकालेंगे घर वाले वही निकाल देंगे जरा दरवाजा बंद कर दो दो मिनट दरवाजा बंद करवा देंगे और फिर मुंह खोल के वो टीत गिरा देंगे थोड़ा भी गोल 0.1 ग्राम क्यों जाने दे तो वो भी साथ में नहीं आने वाला है दिस इज़ अ 70 और 80 ईयर गेम इन ऑलरेडी 45 50 55 60 कंप्लीटेड फर्स्ट रो कंप्लीटेड नियरिंग बट 50 55 सो नाउ ओनली 10 15 लेफ्ट ऑफ कोर्स फाइट एंड विद द ग्रेस ऑफ गॉड Definitely, I pray for your good health and long life, but practicals, what we see, 70 or 80 year game, fight and plus minus with the grace of God. Yes or no? Live with a heart. Daily 1.5 lakh people leave this earth in 24 hours. 24 hours is 86,200 seconds. And 1.5 lakh people leave this earth. So every two seconds, three people leave this earth. We started this talk at 7.15. It is 8.5, 15 minutes. 15 to 6, 3,000 seconds, 5,000 people left this earth. If God decides that he wants to put the full concentration from tomorrow on Coimtur, <laughs> if God decides that tomorrow, the 10th of August, I want to pick all 1.5 lakh from Coimtur, what will happen to this city? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> from outside here. Yeah, because. No, no, select karke lenge. Unko aata hai wo. <laughs> yes, because the southern four states has too much of gold. Because there is a tra tradition here to amass a lot of gold in the house. Normal tradition here in the southern four states. People are fond of gold. Haan, to bolo yaar, ye to reported hai. <laughs> ye to reported hai. In the financial times, economic times. So I end in the last five minutes. Apne shayad Vilas Pawar ka naam nahi suna hoga. See what a business heart people possess. He is an ordinary auto rickshaw driver in Mumbai. You go on the YouTube and put the name Vilas Pawar. Uski auto rickshaw ki bhi photographs hai andar, from different angles. Auto rickshaw wala must, that means he is earning maximum, because it is Mumbai, it is 10, 10 to 12,000 rupees per month. Maximum upper limit when you have tourist flow, it is 15,000 rupees per month. Max, 500 rupees per day, max. He has a first aid box free for passengers in his auto rickshaw. Business heart. Second, he has a small donation box for education help to orphan children of Maharashtra. On the box it is written, the box is sealed and will be opened by Vikroli police and the phone number of the Vikroli police station. So if anybody wants to donate, he is very clear, the passenger is very clear that my donation will not be misused. On the box it is written very clearly, including the phone number of the Vikroli police station. You can check that whether this auto rickshaw of this number, the donation box there is operated by you and they will say yes. Third thing, 
on international women's day he drives women free in his auto rickshaw on international children day he drives children free in his auto rickshaw he puts up a big banner today is international children day so children are free so children from the suburbs of mumbai they just hop into his rickshaw for a free ride and he takes them for a free ride he puts up inspirational slogans every day a new slogan every day in his auto rickshaw that the passengers can read he specially campaigning for aids awareness that is a cause which is close to his heart fine as i said whichever good so social cause or a reform that is close to your heart you can do something for it this one is close to his heart so he is doing something in this field a new slogan every day for inspiration to passengers there is a cctv in his auto rickshaw that the passengers feel completely safe while traveling in his auto rickshaw there is a cctv in an auto rickshaw he has about four five magazines and da daily newspapers in his auto rickshaw that if there is a long ride normally happens in a big metro city like mumbai half an hour 45 minutes one hour so people can be comfortable in lieu of that if you want to listen to listen to some music there are two earphones there you can hear music that is free imagine the value of the business that he has created he was named the person of the year by a giant international business community and when he was interviewed smiling enjoying his life he was asked just 10 to 15000 rupees of income per month that too when you are living in a metro city like mumbai see cost of living in coimbatore is different cost of living in mumbai is different what is 15000 year you need 50000 there by very simple small equation what is 15000 year you need 50000 there and there only 15000 he says that the joy that i get i enjoy the happenings in my auto rickshaw and i enjoy that i'm giving back to the society if an auto rickshaw can do so much of a business heart when he doesn't have such a big business when he thinks beyond his mind and he gives the control of his business to his heart when his emotions overcome his basic mind logics that please don't do this mind must be telling him quite many time that you must be spending up 2 to 3000 rupees per month on these things why should you but then his ideas for social service overpower the basic logic thinking of his mind so when you go back home today put in your youtube vilas pawar auto rickshaw driver mumbai or just vilas pawar is enough and you see what he does because there are few things which even i have not said today because these are the few things that i remember and you see the joy on his face and compare with yourself that after a 10 crore 50 crore 100 crore turnover do you have the same joy on your face in the at the end of the day this is a business heart not just a business mind pure din paise ka sochna mat pramukh swami maharaj lived his motto in the good of others lies our own in the progress of other rests our own so he did selfless activity when pramukh swami maharaj passed away at the age of 95 3 years back not a single bank account of his not a single locker not a piece of land not a house or a home in his name absolute selfless service that is working from the heart so lastly i would say that an absolute business mind it happens because of our over infatuation towards money we have given money too much priority in life money decides everything in our life yes or no <coughs> from our choices not just of the clothes or ornaments that we wear to our relationships with people also once you come to know that this guy is not going to be of much use to me in future then dekho abhi se pranka rahul na bol raha hai just casually pointing at him this is the common 
बिहेवियर दैट वी सी इन दी सोसाइटी एंड वंस यू नो कि यार इसके पास से दो पैसे का थोड़ा स्वार्थ तो है हेलो हाउ आर यू हाय वो हेलो हाय के पीछे अर्थ क्या है वो दो पैसे का बोलो तो सही है हाँ या ना है too much infatuation towards money but today when you before you retire before you go to sleep when you are in your bedroom you off your tv put your mobile phone aside sit quietly take a piece of paper make two columns column 1 things that money can buy and make you happy column 2 things that money cannot buy and you need it to become happy column one will have a house a car a picnic a trip branded clothes jewelry everything money th things that money can buy and make you happy column two things that money cannot buy but you need it to become happy trust relationships health food appetite many things peace sleep everything things that money cannot buy but you need it to become happy I give you two options. Select one from it, okay? Option one: hundred million dollars in your bank account. देखो सभी के मुंह पे, चेहरे पे आनंद 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 हो गया. Option one: hundred million dollars. Option two: if you select option one, I'll take away your family and your health from you. Parish. Which option? Second, you want family and health, not hundred million dollars. Yes or no? Money counts, but it doesn't count more than the things that you need to become happy without it. So don't give too much priority to it. Don't put too much of emphasis on it. Definitely work hard to gain good money, to get good money, but don't give a priority because if there are 100 things that money can buy and make you happy there are 1000 things that money cannot buy and you need it to become happy michael jackson used to sleep on a bed of 94000 us dollars i'm talking of 80s but after taking 10 sleeping pills he could just sleep for 1 one, one and a half two hours which is more important and he left behind a ranch in california which is 6000 acres so money can buy you good beds but cannot guarantee you a good sleep money can buy you a good health care plan but cannot guarantee you a good health otherwise why would aditya birla the chairman of the aditya birla group pass away because of cancer at the age of 51 he went all around the world for the best cancer treatment but yet he passed away so money can buy you a good health care plan not health money can buy you good food but not hunger and digestion ha eh? appetite and digestion nahi it cannot guarantee you money can buy you good branded clothes and jewelry but not beauty and handsomeness otherwise only the rich would be actors that is god given but every everybody has a regret when they are standing in front of the mirror if if this was like 10% better <laughs> i would have gone to one of the woods hollywood tollywood collywood pollywood whatever the woods are and number of woods upon this earth <laughs> i would have made a career in one of the woods if everybody when he, he or she stands in front of the mirror should have got this idea thought 10% better and i would run on the wood but that 10% was left because otherwise who would fill the theaters <laughs> who would sit in the audiences if everybody came on the stage everybody went on the screen who would be in the audience you got my point so god restrict so don't regret your life enjoy a good life accept whatever you are wherever you are happiness is not a wealthy man's privilege yes or no when you look at the beautiful morning rising sun 
the amount of happiness that Mukesh Ambani can get, the same you also can get. Yes or no? Natural sources of happiness are equal. God created sources of happiness are equal. Man created sources of happiness can differ. Relying upon that is a heart. Relying upon man made is a mind. So, this is a business heart and not just a business mind. Apply both, but make a good combination of both and try to lean towards the business heart. You will create good people around you. You will be successful in good projects that you do. You will leave behind a good legacy. You will use your resources and money for some betterment of the society more. And that is how you will enrich your life, life of the people around you and leave behind a good example for the society to follow. Thank you very much and all my prayers for all of you.